yet another drama today at the National Assembly as members of the NDDC Interim Committee staged a workout at a pro-public hearing of the House Committee on the NDDC. And the drama over the NDDC did not stop in Abuja. It was also in Porakot where Governor Yinsung Wiki of River State obviously came to the rescue of the former NDDC MD, Ms. John Nune, who claims he's been stopped from going out of our Porakot residence. And the President, Muhammad Buhari, orders speedy investigation of the NDDC matter. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimbalue in Lagos. Some of the breaking news that we have for you right here on Channels Television. Uh, the President, Muhammad Abuari, has ordered a speedy and coordinated investigation into the corruption scandal in the Niger Delta Development Commission and DDC. The Senior Special Assistant to the President of Media and Publicity, Mr. Garba Shou, uh, made his known in a statement earlier today. He explained that the president gave the directive for better coordination among security and investigating agency with the National Assembly. We stay on that matter for you. Stay with us and uh, so we can give you more updates that you need to know. So more updates is coming over the politics in the National Assembly uh, and the workers there over what their activities and the years of service. So the National Assembly Service Commission yesterday approved the retirement of some National Assembly officials who have attained the retirement age of 60 and have spent 35 years in public service. The commission today issued a query to the clerk of the National Assembly, Mr. Mohamed Sani Omolori, over his refusal to proceed on retirement. The commission had approved uh, the retirement of Mr. Omolori on the basis that he had spent 35 years, but the clerk refused, saying that the 8th Assembly had approved his tenure extension. The chairman gave Sani Omolori 24 hours to respond to the query. Tonight, we shall dissect for you the drama that played out in Abuja at the National Assembly during the probe uh, by the House Committee on the NDDC when the NDDC board walked out and also what happened in Porakad. That's what we dissect for you tonight and what the president said about the speedy investigation of that. But let's check out some of these stories we have for you on our political roundup. President Mohamed Buhari has today met with the leadership of the National Assembly at his office in the presidential villa in Abuja. The Senate President Ahmed Lawan and the Speaker of the House of Representatives very, Femi Bajabiamila are meeting the President two days after the President gave a go-ahead to the Minister of State for Labor over the special works program. The federal government says Nigeria might be witnessing an end to illegal mining and the conflict it brings to mining communities. Today, the government flagged up the implementation of the Presidential Artisanal Gold Mining Development Initiative headed by the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. At the Council Chambers of the State House Abuja, the President was presented with a 12.5 kilogram gold bar bought by the Central Bank of Nigeria for 268 million naira and to be kept at the Central Bank of Nigeria. An estimated 250,000 jobs and $500 million in royalties yearly are hoped to be generated from improved gold mining operations in the country. Improved mining operation could lead to the generation of over 500 million United States dollars annually in royalties and taxes. More reactions have continued to trail the adoption of indirect primaries in selecting the governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the October 2020 governorship election in Ondo State. Today, a coalition of APC support groups are calling for direct primaries. One of the leaders of the coalition, Mr. Debbie C. Abraham, insists that the fate of the party hangs in the balance if it goes ahead to select its candidate through indirect primaries. One of the leaders of the coalition, Mr. Debisi Abraham, insists that the fate of the party hangs in the balance if it goes ahead to select its candidates through indirect primaries.
So let's get to it, everyone. Again, the breaking news we have for you. President Muhammad Buhari has ordered a speedy and coordinated investigation into the corruption scandal in the Niger Delta Development Commission NDDC. There's a statement from the presidency which says that the president wants all the investigation with all the relevant agencies to be coordinated and uh, speedily uh, worked on. And so, the crisis is rocking. Uh, the Niger Delta Development Commission is getting more and more interesting by the day. Today, series of events and some dramatic situation played out. So where should we begin from, uh, first and foremost? Uh, early in the morning, the drama began in Port Harcourt, the capital of River State, where armed police personnel attempted to arrest the former managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, uh, Dr. Joy Nune, the security operatives were said to have surrounded her home and later broke into the building, but were unable to arrest her before the state governor, Yim Samriki, arrived at uh, the Dr. Nune's compound and moved her to the government house. The former NDC boss who was due to appear before the House of Representative Committee in Abuja today to channel television later that she put up resistance because the policemen did not have any warrant to effect arrest. Take a listen to that telephone interview with her. Sorry. The policeman from Port Harcourt or Abuja. Well, I. That, uh, Dr. Joy Nune, uh, re uh, recounting our deal earlier today. And so, uh, the reason why the governor went to our rescue, the governor uh, spoke about it uh, in some week. Governor of River State, take a listen to him. The way things are going now is that everybody wants to destroy the state. I will not accept it. So, what has happened today is a disgrace. It's a disgrace. A woman is turned to her house, 4 a.m., broke her security doors. Assuming they were able to take her, who knows what would have happened? If not that I got this SOS, who knows what would have happened to her? And then she dies tomorrow, police says, they're investigating the matter. And I just said, it's not that well. I went there personally by myself to see. They said they are IG monitoring unit. That's what they said. And IG monitoring unit has taken over the responsibility of crime in the state. 
the sheep is not aware. As he said, sheep told me is not aware. Sheep says not aware. So that was what happened on one hand in Porakot. What about Abuja at the National Assembly? But the House Committee is resolved to compel the acting MD of NDDC, Professor Ponme, to appear before it. The lawmakers threatened to issue an arrest warrant on Professor Ponde after he refused to make presentations before the House Committee investigating NDDC activities and walked out of the session with other officials of the commission. Professor Ponde said the commission will not take part in the investigative hearing because it is presided over by the lawmaker who, according to him, has been accused by the NDDC of hijacking the commission's projects. The permission was not granted by chairman. Chairman, let it be on record that you did not grant the permission. It is on record. I didn't grant permission this committee. Let me just um, say that we are not comfortable with the chairman of this committee presiding over a, met a matter in which he is an accused party. The NDDC has over the time accused the Honorable Olubumi Tunji Ojo of different crimes against the NDDC and its people, and he has responded in press. It's an interested party, and we do not believe that uh, the NDDC can have justice because he cannot sit in his own case. Um, we have no issues with appearing uh, before chairman, committees chairman, because we have order. appeared before point of order, the chairman. Senate point of order. ad hoc committee. Point of order, and chairman. as long as he is the chairman of this committee, the NDDC chairman. will not chairman. make any presentations here. There is no point of order here, please. I'm just stating our stand here before we start. Please, sir. Thank you very much. Let it be on record that in the process of this investigation, as a committee, we have done our best to give them the right of fair hearing. And the acting managing director of NDDC came in and decided to walk out on this committee as his permission was not granted. Let it be on record that he walked out on this committee. That was what happened earlier today. Let's get into it quickly. Now you have perhaps the whole information and the picture. Let's get that some inside information on what happened on one hand and the other side. I've joining me from our Buja studio, uh, Honorable Benjamin Kalu. is the chairman of the House Committee on Information. He joins us from our Buja studio. Let's begin with him and we get the other side in the course of the program. Honorable Kalu, thank you so much for joining us tonight on the program. Um, Okay, I uh, also have Mr. Francis uh, Indimkoa, who is the National Public Secretary of the Citizens' Quest for Truth Initiatives. He's, we will be speaking uh, on the, from the point of view of the NDDC, perhaps in the defense of their action today. Let me begin with uh, Honorable Kalu. Honorable, does the action of the IMC today, does it mean that that's the end of that pro panel? Because when they pick hole in the integrity of the chairman and the leadership of that pro panel, what does this mean? Thank you very much. Let me correct that uh, I'm not the chairman information. I'm chairman media and public affairs and the official spokesperson of the House of Representatives. Yes, uh, viewers, thank you for tuning in. Your question as to whether that is the end of the of the hearing, no. When they left, we continued and ran a full section of the investigative uh, hearing, and it will continue tomorrow. It was supposed to be for two days, but it's going to go for three days. Um, as you know, you mentioned something about integrity. They casted as passion on the integrity of the chairman. 
uh, that wasn't what they actually did. They are trying to hide something. It's very obvious to Nigerians that when a platform is given to you to enjoy fair hearing, and a man you are accusing has asked you 90 days ago to report him to the police, the DSS and all the security agencies, if you have anything against him, Honorable, I'll ask you to report well, apologies him to, to the Apologies to Botin, Honorable. Uh, uh, let, let's, sorry, I will allow you to continue. Uh, let's take this break, and when we come back, we'll talk more. Stay with us, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Let's get back to the conversation on the controversies over the NDDC and what happened today at the National Assembly when the NDDC IMC took a walk out of that investigative panel probe. In our Buja studio is the uh, Honorable Member, who is a spokesperson of uh, the House of Representatives, Honorable Ben Kalu. And with him there is Mr. Francis Idemkoa, who is the National Publicity Secretary of the Citizens' Quest for Truth Initiatives. His uh, position is uh, on the, the side of the NDDC. Honorable, apologies for uh, cutting you short before we went on that break. Uh, but if you uh, may clarify quickly for Nigerians, because the big question is the fact that how do you hope that this will continue, except if you think perhaps that you're going to do this without the IMC, who says they cannot stand in front of your committee when the chairman is presiding? Thank you, Sharon. We, uh, we have a constitutional mandate in the job that we are doing. And at all times, in serving Nigerians, we make sure we remain within the parameters of the constitutional commission, the constitutional mandate from section four to 88, 89. And I want to refer Nigerians to the provision of section 60. Section 60 of our constitution says that the powers, that, that the House and the Senate shall have the power to regulate their own proceedings. Which means when we sit, we determine how the sitting goes. You don't walk in and tell us this camera should not be there. This man should not sit in this meeting. If you remember, it happened in the Seventh Assembly when my sister, Arumote, from my constituency, who was in charge of SEC, appeared before one of our members. And what, he, what she did was to accuse him of you know, being implicated in corruption with regards to SEC. What did he do? The chairman of the committee said, the security agencies, you are here. I'm submitting myself to you. If there's any allegation against me, Please be kind enough to investigate me. And she did not leave the, the meeting. She did not leave the hearing. The hearing continued because the chairman hit the gaffle and said, this constitutional mandate, responsibility must continue. I tried to draw the attention of the chairman of the IMC. I personally tried to I raise a point of order to address him you know, uh, with regards to the provision of Section 60. I, told, I reminded him that we regulate ourselves. You don't tell us the chairman is not supposed to sit there. We uh -huh. have a vote of confidence on the chairman. You don't cast as passion on him when we have committees of the House that handles issues that he was referring to. Committees right, like honorable, ethics and privileges. Let, let, me, let me quickly they jump and uh, get uh, Mr. Francis Dinkoha to, to uh, give us a sense of why the IMC took a walk. Uh, why would they take a walk? Does it mean that they're never going to appear? Or what is the stance of the IMC in this matter? Uh, thank you, Shil. Uh, first, I want to clarify the fact that I am not a member of the IMC, so I, I do not hold brief for the IMC. But to answer your question, you find out that even in the average, in the normal judiciary setting, if an accused feel he cannot get justice from a judge, he says so. And the natural course of action is for the judge to recuse himself from that hearing. That's the right thing to do. Now, the truth is that there is nothing stopping um, the chairman of that committee, Honorable Tunji Ojo uh, Lubumi, to step aside for his deputy. In fact, just, not just like the Senate did 
due diligence by setting up an ad hoc committee to sit on this matter. We were at the Senate last week. We were there. We made our own presentation. Now, coming here, the IMC haven't raised the objection. You know, currently, with, with what is happening in the country, the, somebody raised an allegation against uh, a member of the Federal Executive Council. And in fact, across the country, people are already calling for his head. Nobody has asked, is it true? Nobody has been able to, in fact, nobody has cared to substantiate that claim. Now, at this point now, what the House is doing is to say, this probe will continue. Meanwhile, you can go and report us. It's, it's, it, 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 it negates natural justice. If the if someone you are accusing already feels they will not get justice from you, it means that the time he is spending before you is, is to his own, I mean, conscience, effort in futility. That's what I feel that made the IMC to walk away. And I'm sure if you were in their shoes, you would do just the same. You see, there was enough time for the House to do the needful. There was sitting on Tuesday, the House had the opportunity to listen to Nigerians who voted them in to do justice, to make laws that will better this country. But they feel that once we have elected them, they assert the authority and, and, and tell us how, we are, how things are going to be done. Nobody is taking away their right from them. We elected them to represent us. And at, at, when matters like this arise, if the IMC feels that the chairman himself is already an interested party in the matter, it's, it's natural for the chairman to step aside. That's, that's, that's what was expected. It didn't happen. Okay, so let's, uh, uh, Honorable Kalu, uh, what is the immediate reaction or action of the House? Uh, is it true that the House has ordered the arrest of the MDA of the, the IMC of the NDDC? Like I said, the House regulates uh, its proceedings. Uh, walking into the House and telling us Mr. A, Mr. B is implicated is not sufficient. You had enough time. This has been going on. Notification for this particular hearing has gone out for over one month now. You had enough time to write to the committee. You had enough time to write to the rules, uh, uh, ethics and privileges you did not write. You had enough time to report to the security agencies you did not do that. You had enough time, enough, enough time to write to the leadership of the house you did not do that. You cannot come in in the course of a proceeding that we have set up and then determine for us who should sit and who should not sit. Section of the Constitution I just mentioned, Section 60, is very clear on that. Now, having said that, to your question, what is the next step? The position of the law is clear with regard to Section 89, Sub 1, Paragraph B, and C. We have raised a motion saying this that took place was not supposed to take place, and we are invoking Section 89 of the Constitution, which gives us the power to arrest. And it is clear, if you give excuse, the, the law there says, let me read it to Nigerians so that you can see what the law says. The law says, issue a warrant to compel the attendance of any person who, after having been summoned to attend, fails, refuses, or neglects to do so, and does not excuse such failure, refusal, or neglect to the satisfaction of the house or the committee in question. So if you give excuses like he's giving excuses now, and it is not to the satisfaction of the House or the committee, we will go ahead with the warrant of arrest. And let me go ahead to say what the, the, the Constitution said, and order him to pay all costs which may have been occasioned in compelling his attendance, and also refusal right. or neglect to obey someone, and also to impose such fine as Honorable. may be prescribed for any of such failure, Honorable. refusal, or neglect or fine so improved shall be recoverable, uh, recoverable in the same manner as a fine before a court of law. So what you have done is that you have ordered for the arrest of uh, the uh, Professor Ponde. Is that what you have done, Honorable? You have asked the police to arrest him. I didn't hear that. You have asked the police to arrest the, him the, and... The law is very clear with, with, regards, with regards to how the uh, uh, um, uh, arrest could be done. Let me read it for you. No, just, uh, no, because we don't have the time. Let me allow Mr. Francis to respond to the action of the National Assembly. So what, what, what do you think can happen with, with this, uh, Mr. Ndokoa? With the warrant of arrest on uh, the IMC? You may wish to come again. I said, what, what you do you think would, would you happen now since is, there's a warrant of arrest on him? 
Well, the, the, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as he has cited, is clear on that. I don't believe anybody would want to walk into, I mean, the, the course of law, unless there is um, uh, uh, probably going by the, the press statement released from the presidency this evening, if there is uh, maybe an intervention from somewhere. But I want to make one point clear. Now, you see, in the course of this NDDC uh, imbroglio, you know that if the, since the House constitutes, um, as it were, they, they are both lawmakers and also in this invoking the law to also by themselves compel a force of action. Now you see that if they decide by themselves and also enforce by themselves, you know that if since if the, the chairman could not recuse himself from that committee, nothing actually stops the Ministry of Niger Data Affairs to on their own decide to institute a probe. To look All right. into what so, Mr. In Indogo, we're out, we are out of time. We're out of time. But, uh, Honorable, Honorable Kalu, we have just 10 seconds to close this show. Honorable Kalu, just in 10 seconds, where do we go from here? 10 seconds, please. What we, where, where we go from here is that Section 88 and 89 of the Constitution, which mandated us to oversight the agencies of government, nothing is stopping us from going ahead with it. And we are going to arrest. This is the time to let Nigerians know the strength of the legislative arm of government. The sovereignty of the legislative arm has been tested. And right. our, we are going to show Nigerians what the Constitution has mandated us, mandated us to do. And this is the time to see who will go right. against the Constitution. So we're out of, of time, Republic Honorable. Of uh, Honorable Ben Kalu and Mr. Francis in Limkoa. Thank you so much, gentlemen for joining us tonight. And that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. Bye-bye.